Hello, and welcome to another Let's Play. Me, Game of Six of the Smoke Room. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can get it for free on itch.io. But if you want to support the people that make this game and other games and get this game and other games earlier than usual, then you can go through Patreon where it's $3 a month. As with other times when I do this, I completely forgot to look that up and I had to look it up while I was doing the intro. Because it do be like that. And boy, it has been a hot minute since I played this game. Because I did a whole bunch of videos and then, you know, got busy with work and did other videos. And the last video I did was Jan, February, March of 2023. And this one I'm doing in October of the same year. <laughs> it's been almost a year. We're over it. But yeah, uh, there's been developmental updates. Like uh, all the saves were, you know, not compatible. So I had to redo it again. But that's fine. I just hit the uh, skip button and all that. But yeah, to catch up on what happened in the last Let's Play. Uh, let's see, we're still doing Cliff's Root, of course. And we tried to run and maybe steal the map. But I chose no both times because it's a very simple map. And I told Cliff that I killed somebody. Though, self-defense, you know? It do be like that. So anyways, reset my face. Oh yeah, and we're going to go to the reservation, I think? Because that was Cliff's whole thing. And start. We're all set to go, yeah? The birds have only started singing when we leave the dwelling. Once again, we're walking at the crack of dawn. This time, I feel much better, even if sleeping with nine people in one tiny room is much more cramped than I'd have liked. What's with that face? You look pouty. Cliff stuck his nose to me the whole this stuck his nose to me this morning, even more so than usual. I guess he means like was, you know, keeping up on his business or something. True to his word, he hadn't spoken to anyone about what we discussed. In fact, he's acting like last night never happened. And I think I prefer it like that. As for as for the forest, it's a lot more peaceful than it felt the day before. Our better spirit pro uh, the better our better spirits probably play a large part in that. Jeb addressed Avery's hanging question, looking winded from all the packing done. Oh, it's been a while, so he's Jeb. Think so. And that's Avery. Let's hope the woods cooperate today, eh? I mean, it's not so much the woods, it's just the monster in it that... Uh, that is... we encountered and stuff. Kind of follows us out, looking at us from the doorway. Mandaba stands next to him. Her expression is hard to read. She almost looks relieved. I suppose this is where we say our goodbyes. I'll be back before you know it. As soon as he sees them, Cliff pushes past us, briskly walking over to the pair. He extends a hand. Gad takes it with some hesitation. Thank you so much for letting us stay in your beautiful home. I shall carry this experience with me for the rest of my life. He's laying it on thick, for sure. Be safe on your travels. The weasel shows his toothiest grin. Oh, we shall. They shake paws, after which Cliff walks back over to us. You boys know where our, your camp is? Jebediah nods his head. I always camp in the same spot. It's about a day's travel from the settlement. Alright, we'll have to be careful. There's no telling what we'll find out there. He rubs the bridge of his snout with a small sigh. And even if we get there unscathed, we'll still need to take inventory. What do you mean? Without the donkeys and the wagon, there's no way we're going to get all of our supplies to the settlement. He looks down. There's only so much we can carry ourselves. It's assuming everything is still in one piece. Even if we carry as much as we can, carry as much as can, even if we carry as much as can, will we have enough supplies for a journey back? 
We do not know if we can restock at the settlement. Hard to say. Everyone goes quiet. We don't really have a choice, do we? Worst case scenario, we'll have to live off the land. Berries and mushrooms are plenty, if you know where to look. Many poisonous ones too, if you don't. Murdoch whistles. It's almost though we ran out of deadly things to find in the in this forest. Wait, I almost thought we ran out of deadly things to find in this forest. Seems it still has some surprises in store. We might want to pack extra water to prepare for the heat. Still chilly out. We should be good for a while. Until afternoon comes around. Yes. Boy, I wouldn't want to think what it'd be like going through a desert with all that fur on. Woof. After that. Let's be off then, before it gets too warm. He turns his head and waves at Avery's parents, but they've already closed the door to the Hogan. Hogan? Following one of Avery's maps, we get back on the trail. Avery and Jebediah leading the group. Jebediah says we need to follow it until we reach the third fo uh, fork in the road. A couple of hours of walking at leisurely pace. Thankfully, the air is still cool, which makes it a lot easier and far less sweaty. I'm walking between Murdoch and Cliff while we bear, while the bear and Kip Fox keep a steady pace in front of us. Now it was... What? A Kip Fox is something else, I guess. I still don't remember their names. There's plenty of plump huckleberry bush uh, bushed on the way. There's still plenty of plump huckleberry bushed on the way. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's a grammatically correct word, sentence, or what. Birds singing in the distance, and the slow trickle of water beside us is music to my ears. I do miss that sound right there. You're not actually smiling. No, wait, you're actually smiling? It takes me a moment to realize he's talking to me. I didn't know smiling. I stopped smiling. Well, that didn't last long. Yeah, yeah. You should count yourself lucky. I ain't charging you to see you. It must have something to do with getting good food and rest for a change. Certainly nothing to do with Cliff here stopping by when you two were alone last night now, could it? I was merely getting some things for my pack. I misplaced the rag I normally use to clean my glasses, see, and... Stayed inside for a solid hour. It was hard to find. You can tell me the truth, you know. I won't cast judgment. Cliff hushes Murdoch louder than he was than he was talking just now. Quiet down, they'll hear you. The fox shrugs. So now you're you care about being quiet? The weasel looks away, red and beat as a beat nearly tripping over a branch on the road, while he wasn't paying attention. The kid fox overhears and turns. He looks a little angry. Careful. Terribly sorry. Just watch where you're walking. One thing to trip one thing to trip over a branch. Snakes tend not to like being stepped on. I'll be more careful in the future. Um it takes the kid fox a second, and another um for, from Cliff to realize he's waiting on a name. It's Tess. Te, sl, is that Slea? He points at the bear walking beside him with his thumb. The bear's name is Yiska. Sela? Is that just Sela? And Yiska. Got it. Uh, your lovely names. Are you two from the settlement? It's where we were born and raised. You must have a lot of stories to tell. Not any. I'd share with somebody, someone like you. Uh, oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to offend. I feel my own lips purse. This is just getting awkward. You apologize a lot. Uh, oh, pardon me. I, I mean, sorry. I'm sorry. 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 Yiska 
uh, says something in the Meseta language. Sila replies, then laughs. He did not mean to alarm you. I keep hearing vague I keep hearing vague about the settlement, but I don't really know what to expect. I'm not, like, again, I feel like I'm not 100% sure if that's just the grammar of, you know, 1800s Western, Midwestern kind of thing. Could be. I know. Isn't that exciting? I think again about what Avery said back at the Hoogan. He and Cliff already have different ideas about things. Only thing I'm excited for is to be out of these woods. Never thought I'd be so sick of the of trees so fast. Murdoch smirks. I've grown content with it. Bushes with death aside, I got to do a season's worth of nature photography in just a few days. He pats his trusty camera, still hanging around his neck as always. It's a wonder it hasn't gone caught in any of the branches yet. It's just about the only thing of ours that got through this journey unscathed. And if I could fill a book with all the things I learned yesterday alone. At least these two are having a good time. I wonder how far we are from Echo. How far we are from the circle. So wait. Are we out of the circle of places where people from this tribe do not camp, or what? Because for reference, like an episode or two ago, they had a map of the area and somebody made like an X for every campsite there was there. And there was like X's all over the map except for a good area out like around Echo. It's like, that seems worrisome. And also somehow these people know about this stuff. Or can feel it. At the front of a group, I hear Jebediah and Avery chat amongst themselves. You sure you're not holding any holding the map upside down again? That happened once. One time too many. Took us half a day to make up for. Cut me some slack, will you, Jeb? That was three years ago. I would if you brought, bought me a drink you said you were gonna. Cliff gestures to us. Excuse me for a moment. As he leaves me, Murdoch's tail sways back and forth, giving me a look. So I follow Cliff over to Avery and Jebediah, and he rolls his eyes. I don't think I could stand getting questioned by Murdoch if I was left alone with him right now. What's wrong? Avery turns his head with turns his head with a sigh. Jebediah here think Jebediah here thinks I can't read a map. I'm not sure why I'm having a hard time reading. Maybe it's just because I'm tired and stuff. But I want to get back into this game for a hot minute. We were supposed to pass by a fork in the trail half an hour ago, but we haven't seen anything of that sort. What? We're going the right way. I know it. Like what happened yesterday? It sure does feel like the force itself is trying to steer us wrong. Or there's still the possibility that you can't read a map. There's also that. The shit from yesterday again? Can't be. Could it? I guess the thing was that we were lost in the forest again. I think that was after getting attacked and running. Or maybe there's something it wants us to see? Murnock's voice and serious tone startles me. This tone is so different from the one he's usually using just minutes ago. He was used just minutes ago. This tone sounds more like the one he used at the campfire. I hadn't noticed him creeping up beside me. You think so? It almost feels like the force led us to Avery's camp, and then to Avery's parents. I know it sounds ridiculous, but Cliff laughs incredulously. Hogwash. You're suggesting the forest is alive somehow? I mean, technically forests are alive, but I mean, I guess you're meaning like mystical wise and sentient. Well, trees are certainly alive, but that's not what I meant. 
What nonsense. Well then, what does your scholar's intuition suggest? There has to be logical explanation for this phenomenon. You know, I would say that, but I have played Echo, uh, what was it? Leo's Root? Holy bugger. Anyways, trees don't just abrupt and migrate to a new location in the dead of night. Then, what about that thing that raided our camp? We all saw something different. A rat? A fox? Sam here doesn't even know what he saw. Is there a logical explanation for that? The weasel falls silent. Now, were we talking about, like, some dude or, like, some kind of, like, were-rat or were-fox kind of thing? Let's all keep a clear head here now. Next to us, Jebediah stops walking. Yishka bumps into him by accident, shoving him forward a little. Hold on. Do you see that? He points up behind the trees, a little off the trail. It looks like some sort of wooden roof. Another dwelling? That's not supposed to be here. I've been here more times than I can count, and that is not... Definitely looks like it, though. I didn't want to feel right. I didn't want to feel right this soon. Oh, that, um... They were buggered with the map or something? He laughed softly. Maybe they could make me a professor at the school of yours. Sh should we investigate, then? His squeaking makes half the words hard to understand. Why so nervous? I thought everything had a log logical explanation to it. He's glaring at the house. That's exactly why we should investigate. His bad attempt at be and brave face isn't fooling anyone. They might have supplies we can use. Or there might be Crazed Hermit sharpening his axe by the front door. Well, it looks abandoned. I think we all expected to see something close to a house that belonged to Avery's folks, but this is just a log cabin. Or what's left of it. What used to be windows have cracked in their frame, and moss is eaten away at the roof. The doorway is so warped that it's slanted to the side. What, na what nature of desolation is this? Cliff starts walking through the doorway. Uh, wait. The weasel is already inside the building. The rest of us exchange glances. Well, what are the rest of you waiting for? Y'all following him in? Fuck no. The hell is he thinking? Well, uh... I doubt I could fit through the doorway. That structure doesn't look safe. I don't mind risking it. Plus, if one of us hurts ourselves, we can help the other. Help out the other. The fox walks up to the doorframe and slips on through. Well, might as well scope out the surroundings while they're inside. Might as well nail, nail a pair of wooden crosses to the trees, because going in there is as thick as pig shit. The bear and the fox, a uh, kit fox, talk to each other in them set to language. And what about you? Uh. Ooh, this is gonna be the choice that decides our fate. I'm kidding. Maybe. Stay with Jeb and Avery. Cliff and Mer. I mean, I'm curious what's in the house. So. You guys be okay outside? This muscle ain't just for show. My client says he needs me. He needs me. Your funeral. Avery gives Jeb a look. First sign of trouble, just holler, and we'll be on over. Or at least one of you, because you're too big. Jeb soaks away, and Avery whispers to him with a stern tone. But I don't see, but I don't waste time, any time walking up to the house. Mostly because I chew, want to, I swear I can read. Mostly because I want those two in and out of here fast. 
The inside of this place has a sticky smell of wood rot, sickly. Shriveled up pine needles cover all but the last bit of dirty flooring. When I step inside, I can hear Murdoch and Cliff speaking, but the voices sound muffled, like they're in another room. It doesn't look like anyone's lived here for a long time. Well, there has to be something. I turn the corner into the hallway, looking for doors or a stairwell, trying to follow their voices. There isn't much lighting in here. Surely, we'll find a letter or an old newspaper if we look long enough. Folks don't always have access to print out in these pl in places like this. Then, I turn another corner. The room looks similar to the front room, but there's a busted wood stove and a broken table. I'm surprised to see our kid fox friend, S Sella, sitting on the chair near the table. I thought you and your friend uh, out there were giving this place the evil eye. You've never been away this long. Wait, you've never been away this long? I stumble back when the fox's voice is several ti timbers brighter or higher. Now that I have a clear look in the dark, I can tell he's wearing a white buttoned up shirt and slacks, much looser than Tessa's le leathers. Uh, I'm sorry, I've never been here before, and I've never seen you. Me and my associates assumed this place was abandoned. Well, we'll be out of your hair and spell. You've got a gun, don't you? I actually don't, but I don't think I want to tell him, I want him to know that. Okay, what the fuck's going on? I'm starting to wonder if I should yell or not. But I see his hand placed beneath the table, and I make, and if I make a sudden move, I feel a pit form in my stomach. I don't mean no harm. I always want to see a real pistol. They say the Navy only has access to those, and they're faster than any piece of junk we could ever barter for around here. Wait a minute. I know that kind of voice. That's a flirting voice. Is this boy sick? Maybe he's just feral? Wait, where are you going? My brown furrows at this queer kit fox, considering I was just going anywhere. I wasn't going anywhere, but he's getting up now. When I see he wasn't holding gun, I back up. He stands up and walks over the counter full of cobwebs with a large orb uh, weaver spider on it. Okay, back up a sec. Turn to the room. You've never been away this long. Oh, so it's a different uh, kit fox. Okay, skip. He stands up and walks over to something with spider on it. I flinch when he pulls his hand on, puts his hand on the counter like it's nothing, and then sits on it. The golden orb weaver is twitching in place. My guess could be from the sudden crowding, crowding. At this point, I don't know if I should feel more bad for him or the spider. The hell is wrong with him? Is he confused? I wouldn't have minded uh, one of those crummy pepper box models he hates so much. No, he's sad. I can hear it now in his voice. He's sad. Sad at me. Like I'm the one who's in the wrong. Like I'm somebody who did something. As if it's my fault. You don't tell me anything anymore. He bends his neck, looking in a hanging cabinet space, pulling a cup, pulling out plates, setting them beside him, like he's used to doing this all the time. I thought you told me we could be different. 
there he goes trying to guilt me about something again. This boy I ain't ever seen in my life. I'm just looking at the audio thing. You know that if you don't show me your world, the colonizer world, I mean, I'll just end up seeing it for myself, you know. That one was set that one was said all sing along teasy, which is exactly the tone I didn't want to hear from a stranger. I'm sorry, I was just trying to make you mad. I'm just walking slowly backwards. I shouldn't have said that. The fox moves his paw down the front of his shirt. He's unbuttoning it. His eyes look terrified, like he's about to beg me for something that he's scared he won't ever get back. I'll even do that, you know? His pants come off. No! Get the hell away from me! I scramble down the hallway, running into the sides of the walls. Cliff! Murdoch! Nobody answers. The sound of my heart thumping in my chest drowns out the sound of him crying. I feel like I'm getting turned around more than I should in a cabin like this small, because I have to turn a few extra times to find the front room. I don't hear him come after me, so I know I should be relieved. But I won't feel calm until I'm out of this place. It's creepy what he said to me. Almost like he was coercing me, a total stranger, into feeling how afraid he felt. Awfully inconsiderate. I can't be out of the front door sooner. The front porch squeals when my foot, uh, foot paws land on it, but I won't slow down. Cliff and Murdoch already outside, yammering at one another like it's another goddamn Tuesday. I gasp and pant, holding my chest. You don't look so good. Did you find something? I don't want to tell him that there's a person in there. Because I don't ever want to see that person again. I can't. I won't. I used to think I was always the most pathetic person within 200 mile proximity. But I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Alright, let's get a move on before the sun starts cooking us alive. We wasted enough time here as it is. I think with that scene change, uh, we should call in, especially since we're at the 30 minute mark. Do, do, do. Oh, uh, okay, I was a bit worried that there would be a wiener somewhere. So, end of this let's play. I'm not exactly sure what I would say with that let's play, because it's like, okay. Uh... We walked away and found a cabin. Also, I guess they add this thing where they, it's like, here's um, everybody's updates and stuff that you can just skip to the thing because the saves were, you know. I wonder how it works with um, choices, you know? Let's see. Like, I think we got up to that point. We're still in Chapter 2. Don't remember that. I guess there's two more of these. At least it helps me figure out, like, how much time there is. Because we got up to that, past that point. Yeah. But what are these things? Spooky. Is that like a, what is it, a pigeon? I do miss that sound at my grandma's place. Good times. Just in drinking coffee. Anyways, enough diatribe and stuff. Or whatever. The end of this let's place a comment. Guys, I like comments. Tim, she like dislike tips tricks otherwise if you like my youtube and lexi grill then please like subscribe and check out the rest of the girl please remember spay new animals to control the pet population and i think this is the first actual one of these videos that came out after i posted the first video because currently let me just check the last video we posted was uh episode seven yeah so it gives you a decent amount of time to know how far into the future I make these sometimes. I have been slacking recently. But anyways, if you want to play this game, free on itch.io. But if you want to support the people that made this game and or get early access, $3 a month. And yeah. And until next time on another Let's Play. Me, Game Wolf 6, The Smoke Room. So thanks and see ya.